Hey everybody, it's Pete, good morning. Today we're gonna to talk about something that absolutely everybody can't stand about trading. Some people mistakenly believe this is what's stopping them from making money, which is absolutely ludicrous. Today we're gonna to talk about the stop loss. <laughs> I know it's the sexiest part of trading, right? However, if you are an experienced trader, if you are a veteran trader, you're only one of those two things because you understand how important the stop loss is. We're gonna discuss it today in a little bit of a different way. We're not gonna talk about exactly where to place it. We are gonna talk about how to properly use it and more importantly, how to properly think about it. Because if you get to the point where a stop loss is nothing more than uh, just a simple part of your trading and not a life or death situation, not a blow to your ego, uh, it becomes really one of the most valuable tools that we have as traders. And I'm going to walk you through something today that I actually think is going to be life changing for many traders because of the mental baggage that comes with having a stop loss. So we're going to talk about it today. We got another fancy PowerPoint today, uh, and we're going to cover and we're going to we're going to make sure that by the time this is over, within the next seven to eight minutes, you're never going to see a stop loss again, which is going to make a dramatic difference in reducing the stress level in your trading, uh, where it's gonna be nothing more than just a part of what you do as a trader, if you actually wanna be a real trader. Real traders respect risk. That's why you eventually become a veteran trader. That's how you become a successful trader. Because look, the bottom line is, trading is about probabilities. Probabilities means that you're gonna win sometimes, not all of the time, hopefully most of the time, but you have to protect yourself for those times that as a part of your edge, as a part of any good edge, if it doesn't work out, you simply scale back, get out, and then look for the next opportunity. We're actually gonna add something extra to that today too, which is if you scale back or get out, uh, immediately understanding how and when to get back into that position. So if you find these videos helpful, definitely click down and uh, subscribe to the channel. That would be awesome. I'd really appreciate it. If you have any questions, leave a comment below the video. And if you want to trade with me live for the next 30 days, definitely click down and learn about the bootcamp too. I'd love to see you on the other side. So we're going to head on over to the screen and we're going to talk about the stop loss. This is actually one of the most important parts here is how to preserve capital because our job as traders is first and foremost to assess the quality of an idea then get to the point where we're going to put money in harm's way. And what do we do if it moves in our favor? What do we do if it moves against us? Today, we're going to talk about if it happens to move against us, the thought process to have so that we make trade adjustments flawlessly, without fear, without pain, without baggage, as nothing more than a part of what we do. So first and foremost, perspective on the stop loss. I think that many traders uh, as a matter of fact, I know, I, I take that back. I know many traders have the wrong perspective on the stop loss. They feel like it's stopping them from making money when they get out of a trade. They remember the one or two trades where they got out of a trade um, and then the trade does exactly what they thought it was going to do. And they sit on the sidelines and like, oh my gosh, it's so stop losses stink. They're the reason I don't make money. Well, tonight we're going to talk about why it's tonight, today, it's dark out. <laughs> why, uh, why that's simply not true and how to get back into a position and add or subtract shares from a trade uh, if it's working out or if it's not. It's, it's kind of like driving. Again, I keep using driving, but you don't just stick in, you know, it's not you just going straight and you don't move the wheel. You have to adjust a little bit. You have to hit the gas. You have to hit the brake. Trading is exactly the same way. So executing a stop loss is neither good or bad. It's a part of what we do as traders. So when you adjust your share size down, same way everybody focuses on adjusting the share size up, when you adjust it down in a trade that moves against you, or when you execute a stop loss, you're doing nothing more than managing risk. I can't emphasize enough this important topic because it is very simple that you would like to add to a position when it moves in your favor, yet so many traders, so many struggling traders, so many smart traders who have the talent to be successful, just sit in a losing trade and say, nope, that's it. I plan to lose that much money. I'm going to sit on it. I'm going to hope it comes back. If it doesn't, I'm taking that big loss. Especially if you're trading stocks right now, that's so silly because there's no, practically no commissions. You're not even paying to get out of the trade anymore. You're basically just getting out of the trade. So really making money in trading, especially in stocks at this point, really comes down to, do you have a plan and can you follow it? And this is an important part of the plan, obviously. So when you take a loss, 
or you scale out of a position, it's not an assault to your ego. It's not saying, uh, I'm wrong, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Why doesn't this work? Well, again, you have to think about probabilities is what an edge means. Probabilities means over time, you should make money. Over time, you should see more profitable trades. But that also implies over time, there's going to be trades that don't work out. That's what the stop loss is for, is adjusting and managing those positions that don't work out. So easily the single biggest reason a trader, maybe you, maybe not you, will not make it as a professional trader is because he or she personalizes a trade that is not making money. I'm right. The market's wrong. My system works. The market's wrong. I can't believe what's going on. I know the stock and you hold it and small losses become bigger and bigger and bigger. And then what happens is you end up blowing up two weeks of trading on one trade that you just should have gotten out of and reassessed. So when you personalize a losing trade, you turn a reasonable small loss into a career ending nightmare, a trading account ending nightmare. And I'm actually going to say you turn a reasonable small loss. I want to word that a little bit differently as well. You turn an acceptable loss into a much bigger loss. So what's the proper mindset? How are we supposed to think, right? Proper management of your losing trades will dictate what you take home every month not how much you make on your winning trades. Now, sometimes I'm known for talking about your losing trades are actually what is hurting your P&L. And I'm implying that you understand how to take a stop loss. And now you need to learn how to manage your winning trades. You need to learn how to identify positions when there's more money on the table, when there's room to go. But proper management of your losing trades keeps you in the game so that even if 40%, which is a very low number, even if only 40% of your trades are profitable, you can still make money if managing your stop losses is done properly. So now as we said, take home, this is an important part here. Anybody can make money on a trade or on any given day. We've seen it plenty of times, I'm sure you've done it. We're like, oh my gosh, that was just so easy. Trades just flew in my favor. It's not those times that are hurting you. It's when the market's slow. It's when the market's confusing. It's when you're over trading. It's when you're trading too big and not managing the downside, not preserving precious capital, those are the times that really are the cause of you not getting paid because you threw money away when it was challenging, or maybe you just weren't trading well. Maybe you had something personally going on in your life. Those are the times when you don't preserve capital that slowly eat away at your profit and loss statement. Okay. So as we said, the stop loss must be a dollar amount you accept. This is probably the most important part of what we're going to discuss today. And here's what I want you to ask. Raise your hand if you've ever moved a stop loss just as it was about to get hit. I have, everybody does. And you know what that means? That means that before you put the trade on, you didn't accept the fact that it might be in harm's way in the first place. Because if you did, you'd be like, all right, if it gets down there, I'll get out. But we don't do that. <laughs> we play games with ourselves, as we said in the previous slide, where mentally we're like, no, I'm right. The market's wrong. I'm not getting out. I'm just going to move my stop loss to another nickel. I'm going to move it another dime. I'm going to move it another dollar. You know what? The extra money that you keep moving and moving away, it slowly starts to erode your trading account when you should have just reassessed. And I'm going to walk you through what that means on the next slide. So what's the proper way to think about it? The proper way to think about it is once you have accepted the risk, You've accepted the fact that there might be a loss on the trade, which is a part of having an edge, right? Sometimes you'll make money, sometimes you won't. We're now talking about what to do and how to think about those times that it won't. This acceptance of possibly losing money is critical. It's crucial to flawlessly executing, getting out of a trade that's not working out. So what does trading smart mean? What does it mean to eventually become somebody who is managing their trades properly? You're accepting putting money risk as a part of doing business, just like any other business owner. You're spending money to make money. So imagine you're running a trading business. You're going to have expense. Imagine you're running a deli. You're going to have expenses. Imagine running a restaurant. You're going to have expenses. An accounting firm. You're going to have expenses. Trading losses are a trading expense. That's nothing more than you need to look at it. And that's it. Don't make it anything other than that. You don't get mad at the lighting company when you have to pay the bill. You don't get mad at your employees when you have to pay salaries. It's a part of running your business to grow this amazing asset that you control. So what this translates into is when it comes time to execute a stop loss, you will do it unemotionally, not like Spock, because it's the right thing to do, not like a robot. It's the right thing to do to run your business because you understand it's a part of doing it to grow your business. The most common reason smart traders blow up their accounts 
are too much leverage, meaning they're trading too big relative to their skills and never truly understanding and accepting risk. So what we just talked about is this mindset shift that right away you're going to say, all right, trading losses aren't bad. They're a part of my probabilities. If I'm trading, that means I think I have probabilities. So there's sometimes I'm going to make money. Sometimes I don't. As long as I understand the times that I don't, I get out of the trade or what I'm going to show you on the next slide, preserve that capital, work the order, manage the order. Everything's going to be okay. So here's some examples. Here's examples of what to do in the real world. Not what you read in a book where you know there's always everything perfect. It goes beautifully in your favor. And the guy or girl who wrote the book took six years to find that one perfect trade, right? This is the most important thing I want to talk about here. Price discovery. Price discovery means you're putting on your initial share size and you're getting feedback. You're putting on your initial share size, you're getting feedback. So let's just say for argument's sake, you're putting on 1,000 shares. Immediately, the trade moves against you. You cut back your share size prior to your stop loss. Now you have 500 because you got feedback from the market. Remember, keep using this word. Put the trade on, get feedback. Put the trade on, get feedback. Moves against you, you cut some of your share. So you're scaling down. So I call this scale out or get out. So in this position here, we're scaling back, right? Moves past your initial entry. So pull, you're up here, pulled back, and now it gets all the way back up there again. You're like, you know what? All right. Add 500 shares. Moves further in your favor. Now you're going to add 300 shares. So this is proper pyramiding when you have shares and they move further in your favor. You always put less shares on so you're not building a top heavy pyramid. Moves back down to your initial entry. Your current risk is only the new 300 shares. So as it pulls back, you now only have risk of the shares that you added because these two are at your original entry price. So the only two things that can happen is it moves against you, you get out of the trade, moves in your favor in a big way, and you scale out of the position. So what I want to get across here is two things. Number one is accepting risk is a part of what we do, which means that we have to preserve capital in the same way that we try and earn profits on good trades. Number two is when you understand that it's nothing more than a business expense, taking a loss isn't a big deal. Like, all right, next trade. All right, next trade. Pay the electric bill. Pay for that inventory. Oh, look, we made some money. Ring the register. That's real trading. I know I'm making a little bit light out of it because there's no money on the line right now, but that is the thought process you need to have. Put a trade on. Okay, spend some money. Put a trade on. Okay, we made some money. That's the right way to think about trading. That is the professional way to think about trading. The last part is understanding feedback and trade adjustments. It, it's a... Um, a mystery to retail traders who are trading at home, not trading in a community like we have in the boot camp, where you understand trading is not about all in, all out. I'm going to make all this money. I'm going to lose all this money. Traders don't do that. Real traders don't do that. We put out initial shares and we get feedback and we either add to it or we scale back and moves in our favor. We make adjustments, moves against us. We make adjustments, especially in this day where we're not really paying anything for commissions for stock trading. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful environment that we're in right now where um, you're not factoring in the cost of trading, which is just crazy <laughs> for somebody like myself who started trading. It was $250 to place a trade back and forth. And that was professional trading. I was trading for a firm back then. It was 125 in and 125 out. You actually had to factor in how much you needed to make on the trade just to break even. It's an unbelievably beautiful environment that we're working in right now. So uh, just, just a small piece of what it means to manage a trade. There's obviously more to it, but the mindset thing, I think, is the biggest thing. Number one is business expense. Number two is adjust your share size based on feedback. Oh, and the last part that I want to talk about is as it moves, if, you, if it's up here, it comes down here and you get stopped out or you scale out. As soon as you get scaled out or stopped out, put an alert in there again at your original entry price so that you don't miss the trade. Because remember we said at the beginning of the video, a lot of people um, take the stop loss and they look back like, ah, oh, did exactly what I thought. I didn't make anything. Set the alert, get back in. Why not? If you still like the idea, if it's still valid, you just happen to get stopped out on that one candle, set an alert immediately when you get stopped out to get back in. So the second time, if it does exactly what you thought it would do, you'll be in the green. If you have any questions, leave a comment below the video. Definitely subscribe, and I hope to see you in the boot camp. Have a great day.